you saw the show this morning. I watched you with the lady psychic uh, with the one word, I think it was... Uh, Char. Char, bro. Yeah. And she was doing wonderful things like, uh, how does this mean anything to you? M-O. M-O. How about Chicago? Those pants. Do you have a belt in your house? What is that? You know? <laughs> how about an L? Is an L? Is there an L in your life? You know, it's wonderful. Are you into any of that? Are you into the astrology at all? Well, I can't say that I am. I got to be honest. What is your sign? Uh, Pepsi Cola. <laughs> Diet. I've been record. seeing a lady who uh, who is very much interested in that, and uh, she's she has. So for a while there, I was I was looking at it just out of, and then I say, wait a minute, what is this? This doesn't apply to me. Say something about my dress or something. You know, I don't know. What to... You're doing a lot of traveling since uh, I'm doing. You know what? You know what happens when you're on a road a lot? You tend I tend to go like this a lot. I go because I wake up in different. I don't know where I am. Oh, I go. Isn't that I go a lot of oi. I do a lot of that because I'm getting... My mother said to me, I was in her house a couple of weeks ago, and she said, and I go, I'm in the bedroom, and I go, oi. She says, what's wrong with you? I said, no, I'm not, Ma, I'm Jewish. <laughs> when you get older, you start doing oi, a lot of oi. But you do when you do the road thing. I used to I used to do this in a band day. So you get up, you wake up, and you you look around. And you Where am say, I? Where have I seen this? Place? And you pick up, a, a, invariably, the matches. You know, it says, such and such a hotel, Omaha, Nebraska, wherever you are. You That's know. right. I'll be in Omaha soon. Yeah. <laughs> You're doing a lot of colleges. I'm doing a lot of colleges, uh, occasional club and concerts, but mostly colleges, yeah. What kind of material? Do you change for a college? No, I'm lucky as now. As opposed to a club? No, because now that I'm, <clears throat> I'm, I'm lucky. I'm you at a point where people are coming to see me. got acceptance. So that's the, it's yeah. the difference. I don't have to. They're, they're my audience, which is terrific. You know? What is the toughest thing? It's maybe a dumb question, but I, I, I was... <laughs> I remember what, having what? seen you in a very difficult situation one time. Yes. But what is the most difficult thing about doing stand-up comedy? Well, not now it's, I guess if you had maybe a guy who was so bombed that no matter what you did to him, he might get in your way, but that rarely happens, you yeah. know. But it's, it's different for me now. When I first started, you know how I, I would run into people staring at me. <laughs> the best one was the Sand and Gravel Convention and Mr. Kelly's, you know, those guys just, what the hell's he talking about? <laughs> Let's go back to the hotel, get something going, bring a donkey in the room, man, is that mess, you know. <laughs> I mean, that... Mr. That, Kelly's in Chicago? That was 10 years ago. Oh, the Sand and yeah. Gravel. I never forgot that. They, they, they were good. They gave me material. But I mean, you know, but that... Yeah. Here I am. And I used to do those long pieces, which you remember, the sure, Jolson and... Sure. And that was terrific for television. But when you get out there in the world of uh, commercial... The commercial world, you know, you got to be able to talk. I didn't know you were supposed to talk to people. I didn't know you had to go say hello. I just went out and said, here's a Western, you know, here's a psychiatrist. You know what I mean? You didn't say good evening. No, right? I tried to. You know, welcome, I tried. welcome hello, to Mr. Lord. Kelly. I was nice. good at good night. <laughs> NBC is trying to develop a, a series with you. Oh, that but that, that's the kind of a deal that I, I can say no to anything, that's which I've done already. So it's not, uh, I said the only way I'll, I'll make a television deal is if I'm able to say no, which I've done already. You know, there's one more that has to be written for me. Mm -hmm. But I'd really rather do movies. You know what I did? There's a you show called... feature like movies, not... I'd rather do... Mo well, anything good. I, I shouldn't... I, I would do any... A TV movie can be just as good as a feature, sure. or a play, if it really knocked me out. I did a show called Insight, which has been on for 22 oh, sure. years. Sure, And that's produced by the Paulists. And I played God on it, which is terrific. Now, I think they're going to show it around Thanksgiving, but they show that over what and over. What's that priest's name? That is Father Bud Kaiser. Oh, yeah. He created the show 22 years ago. Yeah. Wonderful, yeah, wonderful. Yeah, wonderful terrific guy. What did you say no to at NBC? Just something that was written for me, a well, pilot. Can you give me an idea what the premise was? Uh, no, it, because it, it doesn't... Somebody might wind up doing it, is why... Yeah, yeah. Th somebody might wind up doing it, but it was something that I really, I really don't want to jump back into a series right now. So I figure well, I got nothing to lose. If somebody writes something for me and I get knocked out by it, okay, fine. Yeah. You know. I know you're a big sports fan. How are you coping with this football, football strike? strike? It's not easy. Well, luckily, the World Series just ended, but... Yeah. Uh, but I, I look, I always pick up the paper and I look for something, I always look for baseball. You know, I always want to, I'm hot stove league stuff. But every once in a while something comes along. There was an article about a guy who admitted that he was a homosexual ball player. And he just wrote the article in the sports magazine. Yeah, a baseball player. Yeah, and he said, and it was tough for him, he came out of the closet. Yeah. Now, what does that mean, coming out of the closet? I mean, I are there people all over America going, guess what? <laughs> you know, opening the door of the closet, goes, surprise! <laughs> guess what I'm going to tell you, and then again. You know, <laughs> the Holmes-Cooney fight was one of the last. I love when there's a big event, because you get, yeah. get the guys over the house and watch it on yeah, cable. Yeah. And we watched the Holmes-Cooney fight, and there were a bunch of us. And the highlight of that fight was when Cooney hit him below the belt. And you know they replay everything on television. The sound heard around the world. And it's coming at you again. They're going to replay it. They're going to oh. show it to you again. And you still, you're sitting there and you still go, ah! 
<laughs> and poor Larry Holmes, I mean, he went back to his corner and said, check it out, man, I don't feel nothing, I'm numb, baby. <laughs> Never mind who's ahead on part, don't lie to me. Check it out, man, I ain't going home without him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, that's such a, you know, I, having watched that fight, I think his problem is, he doesn't look like he has good legs to me. Who's that? Did you have a feeling that Holmes or Cooney Cooney? does not have good legs? I mean, he got hit and the legs turned to rubber Oh, bands, yeah, well, that, that, he had never gone that far, too. Yeah. He'd never gone that, that long a time in, in the ring. Yeah. You're politically active. What are your feelings about the coming election day? Well, I'm not active. I just, I just kind of follow it. And, and what, what not, I don't know about... You put a lot of material on those cats, too. Well, yeah, well, that's what knocks you out. I mean, I meet some of these people, too. These guys come up to me and they shake my hand. Mayors of small towns, you know, and they're always, hi, how are you? You know, and I'll do it better than he will. You know, it's that kind of... <laughs> But what knocked me out was during the Falkland crisis, the English politicians were doing something Americans never do. They were resigning immediately. They would quit. They were just resigning in droves. The guy would get up there and say, it's my fault entirely. I quit. <laughs> I'm a disgusting human being. Shoot me. Take me out and shoot me. I don't deserve to live. Or, or whip me. Yes. Whip me, won't you? You know, <laughs> have that thin fellow, fair child. Or you'll never see Americans. Americans do not quit. You catch a guy on tape taking $50,000, yes. I think there's been a misunderstanding. <laughs> you know, so, I, I, knew, I knew he was a phony. Yes. He was wearing a turban. Well, even during the last time with the tapes, they had these guys, Arabs, giving these guys millions of dollars. They, they were all copping out and saying, well, I, I can't drink. You know, I, I thought he was giving money for a six-pack. <laughs> and also the men's room, that's, no, that's not new. <laughs> Every couple of years, there's a guy in the men's room saying, I, don't, I, had, I can't drink. You know, I, I went in the men's room, and there's this young boy in there. Good looking boy. I thought he was one of my constituents. I reached out to grab his hand. God knows it was dark. I didn't know what I was saying. You know, I mean, it's not a new thing. But the English come. You know what knocked me out? The prince and the queen. Have you been reading about the uh, oh, yes. the kid and the, and, the, Andrew, yes. and the actress type? Coo, 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 coo stars. yes. And the, the queen was really angry at me. He said, do you know it? You're doing embarrassing me on the throne. You know? And the kid's probably saying, well, Mother, she's not what she seems, really. She reads, you know. She's always in the library, naked, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> They're wild. Yeah. You're, where are you going to be appearing in the near future so we can tell people about Well, it? let's see. Next week, on uh, next Thursday night, I'll be in uh, Miami at Florida International. The following night, I think that's the fourth. I forgot now. The following night, Friday night, I'll be at Creighton University, Omaha, Nebraska. Mm -hmm. And then around, I think, the 16th of November, I'll be in Milwaukee at Marquette University. A lot of oh, here. Doing stuff. a lot of that stuff. Please stay, Steve. Laney Kazan is joining us okay, in a moment, okay? Yeah, all right. Be right back with Laney Kazan after this.